What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are back for another daily bodybuilding news live, and we have a ton of news stories for you guys today, including IG versus reality, Photoshop of Classic Physique's latest up-and-coming star. We've got Jamie the Giant Christian, I believe that's what he goes by now. He is actually going to be on Gladiators, which is next level news. Obviously, an I for B probe we all know and love. Samson Dowder gets AI treatment, how AI might affect bodybuilding. And we have a ton, a ton, a ton of physique updates. John De La Rosa coming back. We've got Keon Pearson. We've got Martin Fitzwater. We've got Ramon Dino. We've got Angel Calderon. We've got how many more guys do we have? Justin Shire. We have Sergio Oliva Jr., Ross uh, Ross Patrick or Ross Flanagan. We've got uh, Jonah Pradels. We have so many physique updates for you guys in this video. Also, if you are watching live, give the video a thumbs up, smash that like button, also subscribe. But let's get straight into this one. And a man we're going to be discussing is Ramon Dino. And you can see him here on stage, courtesy of Gilco Productions, this footage at the 2023 Arnold Classic, which he took out, beating the likes of Urs Kalachinsky and many other great classic physique competitors, Terence Ruffin. Uh, actually, did Terence Ruffin do that? I don't know if he actually did. I've got to try to remember that. I don't think he did in the end. But um, a great competitor. He's got his latest physique update out right now. And I've got to ask the question about Ramon Dino, because he looks bigger here than he was on stage. He looks in comparable condition, obviously not the same level of conditioning with the dryness. But when you look at this physique, you've got to wonder if classic physique is holding a guy like this back because he definitely is bigger here. And this is a current physique update too. I do have confirmation on that. That was This was posed by his sponsor, I believe. It was on uh, IG, but also I found this one on the YouTube channel where you get a little bit better quality so you can see a bit more of what's going on. But I would love to see this sort of physique in open bodybuilding. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think this should be in open bodybuilding or not? And shout out to you guys getting in the comments. Batman, the way back uh, is... So is Izo Safa. Shout out to you as well. Thank you guys so much. But let me know what you think of these latest physique updates from Ramon Dino. And let's get into all our other physique updates. And uh, we'll start with Jonas. What's his name? Jonas Pradels, who's competing in that Spain Pro, which I believe is only about six weeks away now. And he's looking pretty fantastic, standing next to the second place finisher in the 212 in the world, Angel Calderon. I've got a bunch of photos from this as well. I've got um, ones from Jonas's page and also Angel's page. So there's no funny business going on with the photos. But we'll go through these. And uh, Angel as well. Obviously, we've got an update from Angel, who's you know, second in the world. And we'll be wanting to try to take that um, 212 Olympia title off Sean Clarita. This one's obviously angled to favor Angel a little bit there. But you can see the nice tight waist there of Jonas. And then you can, or Joanne, John, John, I'm going to say John. Um, he looks really good. The legs look good there. Angel, his legs are not his strength, but upper body thickness is his strength, as you can see there. And uh, we'll go to the other photos. Here you get a more of a straight on view and look how impre impressive Joanne looks here. And then you look at the wall for any funny Photoshop business. Those biceps are not extra peaked up or anything like that because that sign would be moved <laughs> i believe and um you can see there his arms are just uh, they're quite a lot bigger than angels <laughs> to be honest and uh this guy is only about 26 years of age as well let's see the translation he said weeks out versus weeks on <laughs> so it's, it sounds like i mean that might be a rough translation but it sounds like Angel is on in his off-season, and then obviously he's X amount of weeks out from his pro debut. Thanks to my friend Angel Calderon for today's training, for the photos, and always for the kind words. You are a future champion of 212, I have no doubt, and this year we'll be watching. Um, forever grateful um, to, I don't know if that's his partner or who that is. Um, but yeah, looking fantastic. That front double bicep is hard, a hard pose to look good, really, on most guys. And he's making it look sensational at such a young age. So I'm assuming he's only going to get better. Pretty good front lat spread. Front double is more impressive in my eyes. Angel's just stacked to the maximum. <laughs> Can't have much more muscle on his physique, apart from maybe on his legs a little bit. There, I would say this pose isn't quite as impressive. It doesn't flow the same way. The delts are very poppy there. I mean, where it doesn't, you know, maybe the arms don't quite match in this pose, which is funny because... On the front double, his arms are absolutely enormous. Maybe he just needs a bit more bicep brachialis there. Maybe a little bit more of a triceps just to fill up this whole area. I don't know. Maybe it's just the angle of the photo too. 
Legs are looking really, really good. Conditioning-wise, let me know where you guys think he's at. At six or so weeks out, I believe that's right. He looks about on target for me, uh, but that's just my opinion. Now let's get to some more physique updates. Next one will go to Ross Flanagan, who's looking insane. He's actually tanned up here, so I don't know if he's doing a guest posing or what, but uh, he's looking absolutely insane, I believe. This is actually, yeah, these, these have to be updated photos. Uh, cannot wait, eight days out. But yeah, I didn't actually read the caption, unfortunately, apart from the eight days out part. And uh, yeah, he's looking very, very good. He's going to be one of the hardest guys. He's got a very clean physique, which I didn't think I'd be saying at this stage um, based on how he looked last year. He wasn't polished and he's looking polished in his physique updates. So I think that Ross Flanagan is going to make a real impact this year and do really, really well on stage. Let me know your thoughts on that. But uh, yeah, I think Ross Flanagan is going to do damage next week at the Cali Pro. And uh, yeah, he's obviously going to have some stiff competition in Tony Burton, who's looking crazy one day out. And I've got a video as well coming out after this one. It's going to be uh, under 24-hour updates from New York Pro competitors. So make sure you stay tuned for that. It's going to be up within the next couple of hours. So Definitely tune in to that video as well. And uh, that's going to feature updates from Tonio and Stu, uh, Stu Sutherland and all those guys that are contending for that New York Pro. And uh, it's a very crazy one from Tonio. But uh, Ross Flanagan, I just can't explain how impressed I am with these updates. And that hamstring hang, it's like it's <laughs> its eating his ass. <laughs> it's coming up and it's, it's literally like inserting like obviously inserts more on the other side um, that part of the hamstring but wow like that is crazy definitely adds a lot to that pose too because he you know to be competitive with the top top guys in the world he needs a little bit more up here even though it's you know nice chest nice shoulders good arms it's like what is he really missing it just looks like a bit more maybe he needs to pull his elbow back a little bit more just to feel this out a little bit more but he makes up for it in the hamstring it's absolutely wild and when he posed down next to Tony Burton too it wasn't like Ross was out of place. Like, Tonio is an absolute freak. And looking at those side-by-side -side posing comparisons, I had Tonio winning. But still, Ross wasn't far behind. And he was one more week of prep behind, too. So that makes a difference. Because we've seen how much Tonio's even changed in the last three weeks. When he's already looking great, but he looks um, that much better now. You know, only a few days out from his uh, debut competition for 2023. Now, our next update is from Sergio Oliva Jr. Sorry if this video is a little bit laggy. I'll check back to see if it is. Yeah, I hate it when it goes like that. But at least you can see what Sergio looks like. I should have downloaded this video. And he says, just let me get on stage. So Sergio is obviously wanting to compete. Could he be a, like a late entrant into that Cali Pro that we haven't heard of yet? Because he looks crazy. Whether he'll try to do that, if he can travel, and we don't even know that as yet, then uh, that would be awesome. Imagine that, like a... Like basically what Arnold, his dad's rival, did um, back in 1980 at the Sydney uh, Mr. Olympia, the only one ever to be held in Australia. And uh, it'd be cool to see Sergio pull something like that off to show up out of nowhere. Um, but I'm sure the promoters would want him to be putting his name up first as well so he can promote the show. But Sergio is looking very good. He's looking his all-time biggest for being in great shape. And that side chest is so filled out, like the most muscular. Like he's a tall guy. He's a, got a big frame that can hold a lot of mass and still keep adding more. So that's what's scary about Sergio Oliva Jr. If he brings his very best. And what a battle it would be, Sergio versus Tonio. Like imagine Tonio work, walks out of this show this weekend and people saying like, this dude can be top 10 in the Olympia. But you'd have to say he's got a chance to beat Sergio. But damn, Sergio, it's looking crazy. So... I mean, regardless of the result, these two are going to have phenomenal 2023s and 2024s and so on, as long as they stick at it. Our next physique update is from Keon Pearson, and he's been impressing me really, like, continuously more and more over the past, like, 12 to 24 months. The dude keeps going, especially lately. I think Patrick Tour has been the best thing for Keon Pearson, and Patrick Tour is a task market master too so he's either going to make or break Keon and I think it's making him and he can be a legit 212 2020 2023 Olympia threat uh going by his latest updates and he's always going to look crazy on his own just because of his structure his shape and just yeah just his flow it's just like you look at this and you go how can anyone beat that in 212 if he comes in at least reasonable condition but I suppose when you stand next to other freaks on stage as well that have more gnarliness to the muscle and whatnot, 
that the judges can make a reason for giving those guys a placing above Keon, then he does get placed a little bit down. But I think he offsets that with such crazy flow, crazy posing, and crazy structure, and crazy muscle bellies. There's a lot of craziness to Keon Pearson's physique. This is 14 weeks out, posted three days ago, and I'm scared for whoever he's competing against in those shows. <laughs> but uh, shout out to Keon Pearson, looking sensational. And Martin Fitzwater, Bodybuilding University man, and uh, he's looking awesome. He says, until next time, Dubai, I'll be back soon. He's just got back to the US and hopefully we'll be able to record uh, Bodybuilding U University coming up soon. And by his latest updates, like, look at that. Like Martin is becoming a very big dude and I'm excited to see what Martin does next time he steps on stage. I can't remember if he said on the podcast, because uh, I think that's the only place we discussed it, that you know he would sort of plan and want to do that Arnold Classic in 2024. It's a possibility or something like that. But I just have a feeling that Martin's going to be gunning for that show. And think about it. He got second to Andrew Jacked. There was, you know, reasons and there's poses that Martin took, no doubt. The back shots he really took with ease, in my opinion. And I think you can even give a case for him on the other shots. Now, bodybuilding isn't judged just pose by pose. If you win five poses, then you win the show. It's not how it works. But at the same time, I mean, I've heard other people say on other channels, like they had it close or, they, you know, it was a 50 50 for them. And, you know, overall, we weren't there. If you were there in person, I did hear some people saying just Andrew Jack's structure and size and everything like that overwhelmed Martin. But Martin looks sensational and you cannot take that away from him. And had Andrew Jack not been at that show, I think there'd be a big different narrative around Martin Fitzwater. But let me know what you think in the comments about Martin. If you do have any questions uh, for the end of the video as well, drop them in the comments and I'll try to get to them before we wrap this one up. Now, I've got a few more updates before I get to that story. Justin Shire, 10 weeks to go, making sure the first impressions are in order. No food, pump, or goon lighting. Uh, just an honest look. And the structure of Justin is crazy. Like, this waist, have a lats flare out. The shoulders look capped. Like, there's really nothing that this dude's missing. I'd have to see him from the back again to get a reminder, but he's got good quads. Calves look shredded already if you look down at his calves they're crazy and uh yeah i think that justin is going to do very well in his pro debut he's doing the chicago pro i believe it is i don't want to speak out of turn there um but yeah the pro debut is going to be impressive for justin shire and uh yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments below now john de la rosa he's been off the stage for a little bit of time now he says in this one i'll read it out to you guys um also, the latest photo is the one on the right here, and this one on the left is from last year. He goes, I debated posting this, but I am damn proud of myself and clapping for myself. No one uh, but my closest people know how many times I've been knocked down on this journey back and stood back up and said, let's go again. Uh, on the left, I was uh, the last time I was in prep a little over a year ago with Patrick Tour. I was 248 pounds and just getting back into training after uh, building out uh, his gym, which is fitness system, uh, systems, uh, sawgrass, F fitness system, sawgrass. Sorry, it's all together there. It's hard to read. Um, uh, the right picture was taken yesterday at 252 pounds. So he's obviously four pounds up to me. He looks in better condition. Maybe it's just the lighting. I don't know. But, uh, and then he says, uh, taking yesterday after tearing my bicep tendon uh, as well as having uh, the surgery to remove a benign growth months later. So John has had some challenges and it, John's a really good dude as well. So I don't know where the benign growth was or anything like that, but I'll try to get him on the show to ask him all those questions. He goes, no show date yet, uh, but I'm busting my ass and can't wait to be at my best. Thank you to my amazing fiance for all she does for me. Um, but to be, I mean, to help me be my best as well. So shout out to John Delarosa, looking fantastic. And I cannot wait to see this dude back up on stage because he has a phenomenal physique. He really like has maintained that very small waist, former training partner as well of uh, Flex Lewis. So we'll see if there's any, here's some stage shots of John. Just awesome physique, thick, conditioned, still keeps a tight waist. And uh, yeah, he posted this eight weeks ago. He says two years ago, I can't wait. So obviously he wants to make that comeback. Now, our next physique update is from Blessing, a Waterboo, 10 weeks out. Chicago, Tampa, Texas puts in the hashtags. He goes 10 weeks, and he put hashtag three Pete. So he's going for all three shows there. And I'm really impressed how his legs have come up. Now, is there a discrepancy between his left and his right? A little bit. 
but not how I thought. <laughs> and it really, like, I don't think it's going to be a thing that we even notice really much. And you see even uh, bodybuilding BS here, uh, the leg looks good. So, yeah, he's obviously giving credit for that. Um, Frank McGrath, legs improved like crazy. And then you see uh, <clears throat> Tyr uh, Tyrannotaurus says legs uh, looking sized up. People are really impressed in the comments. Obviously, it's on his own post, so we're going to get more positive and negative. And then look through as well. Waist is staying tight. Looking pretty damn thick. 10 weeks out, I'd say he's right on point. I'm trying to remember who Blessing actually works with now. I know he's working with George Farah. I can't remember who he's actually working with. Let's see if there's any tags in this photo. Can't see any tags either. But obviously a muscle tech athlete, so I want to say a shout out to Blessing Waterboo. Now, I wanted to get to this guy. This guy here. So I was going to do a video, a YouTube short, in fact, about this guy saying, but could this be the dark horse that comes out of nowhere that could upset the apple cart and uh, maybe upset at some point Chris Bumstead? And I don't think by looking at this photo on the right that this is the man to potentially upset Chris Bumstead. The level of Photoshop is strong. Look at how much bigger those arms are, and I'll go to a video very soon as well of, uh, I believe it's Who Is The Best BB, Fernando Arroyo, and also Goob. I sort of put them together and uh, some of their videos and uh, comparisons. So let's go to that now. I'm going to show that on the screen so you guys can see the clear difference. See Goob on the right, you can see the <laughs> him changing the photos from the original photo posted by PCA and the photo he did, and another one here as well on the right clear difference and then on the left you can see him that's on stage he has a very severe pec tear very very severe and then the photo on the left the waist is made super super cinched and the arms are made bigger and now i'll go back to the end of that video just to show you that that on the right right there apparently is his coach and that's him on the left so i'd say they're both whether it's this sven dion or jack bravo as he's called himself on Instagram, uh, in his actual bio, it says Jack Bravo, and then here it says Sven underscore Dion. So I don't know what his actual name is, and it's probably something completely different to both of these things. And uh, yeah, the guy on the right is his coach. So whether this Sven Dion has photoshopped his coach, or his coach has photoshopped this image with those legs, it just, they're not real. I mean, typically guys of Asian descent have big quads, but I don't know if they're that big. Uh, to be honest, but let me know what you think about that. I think it's pretty hilarious, and uh, it's just a little bit too much. You know what I mean? It's If you're an up-and-coming guy that's about to turn pro, or potentially could turn pro, or people were talking about you in, like, Chris Bumstead, you know, potential threat level, um, you know, and sometimes talking about him in that level maybe is a bit unfair because it's crazy. But look at this one on the right here. This is a video from that photo shoot and then a photo. It's just such... I mean... Honestly, I don't even care people touching up their images a bit and, you know, just maybe if they just make their waist a little bit tighter. I, I mean, in the day and age we're in now, you, you probably wouldn't do it, to be honest, because if you're stepping on stage, I think it looks pretty bad. Uh, but you see the difference in the arms there. The arm size is like doubled and just everything is made much, much bigger. And it helps with the blur blurry background there too. And obviously if it's trees in the background, trees can be shaped any sort of which way. So... The fact that you look at the legs as well, dramatically bigger. And the waist is, yeah, it's probably smaller. Yeah, it's definitely small. It's pulled in as well. So there's clear, clear difference there in all of this. And it sort of sucks because I was excited when I saw that photo of the guy on the left. It says, new Mr. Olympia classic physique of Instagram. And that's exactly what it was. Because if you saw this sort of shape, put it on a classic physique pro stage, it would do very well. Very, very well. But this wouldn't do as well. It's still not a bad physique, so I'm not taking anything away from this guy. He's got a torn pec, but if you saw that in person and a bit better quality video, he's not bad, but he's not <laughs> contending best in the world. That's no doubt. Um, but yeah, anyway, guys, let me know what you think. And I want to get something cool in this one, and it's AI in bodybuilding. So I saw this. I don't know what AI app this was or what it was done by. Uh, let me know if you know in the comments or which is the best one to get these sorts of effects. But this is Samson Dowd at the Pittsburgh Pro Guest Posing. Footage courtesy of Gilco Productions. And obviously he's out of condition, right? It's almost put to this like level of cartoon conditioning 
on Samson and it knows where the, the muscles are. Like look at the serratus and intercostals, that bit, you know, on the side of the abs. They've put that in, you know, in the AI. They've got the detail on the outer quad. It's not exactly how a typical outer quad looks, but you can see the details on the arms. You can see the lines through the shoulders as well. It looks so... I actually love this AI footage. It's super cool. And the way, like, it's not perfect. But you can imagine this is the start of AI. And I think he's got too many muscles in the back there, but look at the detail on the right compared to the left. It's like they've added in that sort of structure to the muscles. And it's not just structure, it's adding in extra muscles. So I think that's super cool, super interesting. And I really like to see the, like, the detail on the side delts, which just isn't there at all on the right. And it's there on the left in the AI. So I find this to be super cool. It's like, it's sort of trippy to look at, but I mean, you can make some cool movies with this sort of stuff. Like if you're acting like that and doing a voiceover, you could just look like a superhero and it could be like a kid's movie. I don't know. Like AI is super powerful. I want to know what this app is. If you guys know, if you're watching live or on replay, let me know and I'll get back to your comment and give you a shout out on the next episode and I'll get to your questions very, very soon in this one. I'll make sure I don't miss anything. I do have something else to add actually in this video and it's a pretty big news story. It's about a guy in our industry getting on the big screen. So I do want to mention it. It's about Jamie Christian. So this is huge. And I actually believe I predicted this slash slash suggested it to Jamie as well. He's going to be on Gladiators in the UK BBC. And that doesn't mean what you might think it means. <laughs> it means British Broadcast Company or something like that or channel, um, AKA the giant on Instagram, which is Jamie Christian says, so this happened. I feel like everything in life has led me here and I can't wait to share this new adventure with you all. Thanks for the support. Good times ahead. Giant. Many put at BBC gladiators, hashtag gladiators, hashtag BBC. <laughs> Be careful searching that hashtag. Then he put, uh, at giant, the gladiator. Actually, I've got to check out that profile because that's probably going to be dedicated to gladiators and his character on the show. Oh, let's follow it. One of the first, one of the first 507th follower here. I'm assuming this is gonna be the same. Oh, here we go. Towering above the others, I'm ready to bring my six foot five inches worth of power to hashtag gladiators. Giant has entered the building. That is next level. I'm so happy for Jamie. This is gonna be cool. And uh, we'll get Jamie on the channel if he's uh, ready and willing to do that. But I don't know how much he'll be able to talk about it, but Super cool news. Very happy for the guy. I feel like he's always destined for something like this. You see what Martin Ford's doing? He sort of reminds me of a non-bald Martin Ford. Maybe a, a better looking Martin Ford. No offense to Martin Ford if he's out there <laughs> watching this. But yeah, I'm very, very happy for Jamie. And I hope he makes it to movies and on the big screen. And uh, his career grows from this outside of bodybuilding because he deserves it. He's been a workhorse and he's been finding it, I suppose, hard on the IFB Pro stage at times because of his height, and he will have to go bigger if he wants to do that. And I don't know if he actually disrupts his plans to compete in classic physique, but if I was him, I'd be putting my all into this. And if he, you know, the stage will always be there. And if he wants to do classic physique, he probably has to downsize anyway. So I think this is a great move, whether he'll downsize a bit, because I don't know if he'd want to be well over 300 pounds trying to compete in this, because the threat, uh, hopefully he takes it serious in terms of getting his body right for this. And, you know, because we don't want any torn muscles, ligaments and anything like that. Because as a bodybuilder, you know how rigid your actual physique can be in terms of, you know, tearing things and things like that when you're doing stuff outside of the gym. And, uh, yeah, but super, super happy for Jamie. He's a good dude and uh, hopefully he does incredibly well in this and I'm sure he will. But I'm going to get to some of your questions now and comments. So let's have a look. What's up to all you guys? Um, here we go. Joel AK talking about Ramon Dino says he'll never make weight, but he should keep going. He's got good lines. Yeah, I mean, do you mean make weight in terms of the upper limits of the open or do you mean back down to classic? But uh, uh, let's go through. What's up, the Red Loop? What's up, my man? He said, Justin, not posting any updates from the back. Um, I should have probably had a better look. <laughs> Let me go back and check. He hasn't posted too, too many updates, I don't believe, as yet. 
But obviously, if your back's not your strength, you're probably not going to post. Oh, he, yeah, there are some updates from the back. Um, but we saw those, that's five weeks ago. So I'm waiting for more. Justin, if you're watching this, post some back update photos um, and let us know. But um, what else have we got in this one? <laughs> Mark Doolan, Photoshop Bonanza. Bubblegum Bonanza. In the words of Louis Marco. Has he ever read loops? <laughs> you said Samson has uh, 13 quad heads. Yeah, it's not a quad. It's a 13 tuplet recep. <laughs> um, Elon Musk condition. Uh, BBC, oh my God. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't get this video. The other day, I don't know what I said in my video. Um, I said something about... Oh, what was it? I can't remember what it was. And uh, the video got demonetized. And I was trying to figure out what it was. It was. There's no particular reason why it could have been demonetized. But then you review it and then it's like, we typically get to these within seven days. But if it's a bodybuilding news video, what's that going to matter? <laughs> 200 views are going to get monetized? Um, um, here we go. Alfonso uh, Burnaby. You say, do you think Stu can win the Olympia in the next five years? I mean, that's such a tough question. We're talking about, obviously, Stuart Sutherland, Beef Stu. He's a phenomenal bodybuilder, and I'm going to be doing a video with updates from all those guys very, very soon on here, so make sure you stay tuned. Probably be in about an hour or so, maybe an hour and a half. But to say he can win the Olympia, I mean, I don't see why not. Let's put it that way. But he's going to have to continue to add more and more size and keep that waist tight. But he's got all the attributes to be able to do it. He just needs to bring his back up. He needs to continue to add to the rest of his physique as well, but especially his back. He needs to come in outrageous condition, like Hardy sort of style. And yeah, he just needs to make those progressions and keep the waist tight. So if he can do all those things, then I don't see why not. I, I mean, I'd say, oh, you know, he could be top five. But anyone you can say who can be top five eventually you're pretty much saying they can win the Olympia at this point because the top five are so close at the Olympia. You look at the last Olympia, Rami gets fifth. The year before, over three years before that, he wins. So, yeah. Anyway, Peter, uh, good for Jamie. Seems like a positive guy. Yeah, absolutely. And Mark Dorn, you say Hardy for, nu for number two, Olympia number two or position number two? I mean, this Olympia, I'm like, it, it actually stresses me out to even think about predicting it because I look at Samson's progression. I'm like, he can win it. I look at Hardy's conditioning though versus Samson. I'm like, oh, they might just give it to Hardy because he's got that rock hard condition. But he hasn't from the back as last year. So from the back, but Hardy has so much mass on the back. So I think it's going to be hard for Samson to win it against Hardy from the back. And then you go from the front where Hardy has that most muscular, which is just razor sharp. But can Samson overwhelm him with structure and overall size? Potentially, for sure. Uh, and then you look at Derek Lunsford. Now, am I going to pick him for the win? That's sort of tough because Derek Lunsford, he's just so phenomenal and has made such improvements. Now, if he's improved even half the amount that he proved from the 212 win to the open second place, he can win the Olympia this year. They're sort of my main three in that way. But honestly, like Brandon Curry's been forgotten in all this. He came fourth last year and his conditioning was off, but he was bigger again. But does he have the legs? And I think it's a lot about who has the least weaknesses. If he can somehow bring those legs up a little bit, um, maybe contact Milos. <laughs> um, but I think you can do very well. Yeah, and as you said, Jay's perspective, he said Derek's looking very good. Looking good. Yeah, absolutely is. Yeah, Mark, you said, yeah, Samson needs to be even better to win maybe. Yeah, I think if he came in like the Arnold, very, very good and can win, but it's going to be dependent on other people at that point. But if he gets much better again, like he has been every time... He can definitely win the show. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of every video that goes up for myself, including all my coverage of the 2023 New York Pro this weekend. Pre-judging, finals, live. So make sure you check them out. So that's it for myself. So for Xavier Wills, desktop bodybuilding, we are...